Mic check. Uh, they wrote me off and I ain't like that So I'ma fight that The bad man Right when you thought that it was safe to relax You gotta Alright so we're here with Mr. Delonzo Barnes The creator, the proprietor Of Daddy Every Day So um, Delonzo, let's start from the beginning Oh man From the beginning Born and raised in Columbus, Georgia. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that. You know about where Columbus is. <laughs> uh, 100 miles south of Atlanta, for those that don't know. But uh, born and raised in Columbus, uh, once upon a time was a great city as I was growing up. I'm pretty sure most people with their childhood think it was, whether it was bad or good, the community, it still was a good childhood nevertheless. Um, learned a lot. Just growing up in the um, streets, I went from cul-de-sac, houses and everything, mom and dad, you know, dog and everything, picket fence, to one of the worst apartments in uh, Columbus, Georgia. But that's how life goes. You're on top and then the bottom. But I learned so much that I wouldn't utilize until later in life um, with um, finding out, like, a lot of most people, Growing up, it seemed, it seemed, grew up without a dad in the house. I had a um, dad in the house. He was my stepdad, but I only addressed him as dad. But a lot of sisters and brothers out there growing up without dads in the house never connected with me as, as I was growing up. Uh, went through elementary, middle school, high school, and when I graduated in 94, I know I don't look like I graduated in 94, look like I probably graduated last year, but nevertheless, um, graduated in 94, I moved if, straight to if Atlanta. If 94 was 76. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. All good, brother. All good. Uh, moved to Atlanta in 94, and I started, I went to school for music entertainment, graduated, got an associate. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys be real with you guys. Unless you're getting a skill like audio, audio engineering and video, don't waste your money on no going to school for music entertainment. And first of all, it's changing every second. Uh, if you got some audio equipment, video equipment, just get started. That's how you truly learn, but I digress. Uh, went into the music business, managing people and things like that. And my head was in it. And I think my heart was in it. I truly believe my heart was in it. I just don't think it was my calling. So a lot of times when you're struggling with things, if it's not your true calling or your purpose, you're going to continue to struggle with it. So um, years of that, trying to do my thing in the music business and everything, then messed around and got married. Yeah, I did. Messed around, got married, then had a son, um, and totally changed my life. I never imagined I would love fatherhood so much. Um, shout out to my boy Kendrick Barnes. Now, he's 15 now, and it's amazing seeing him grow. But the biggest life-changing thing I thought was just had giving birth to him. Not me giving birth, but you know how I'm saying, what I'm saying. Was helping him with his homework. Six years old, I'm helping him with his homework. He's one of them daddy dudes. Like, he loved being around me. Still to this day, love that. I'm helping him with his homework, and he says, I love it when you help me with my homework. You're my daddy every day and put his head on my shoulders. And when I say light bulb moment, like people always say light bulb moment, never truly experienced that. I experienced it that day. And, you know, went on with my day. And at the, before I went to bed, I got on my laptop and typed daddy every day at the top of a uh, document. And then you know, kind of weeks went by. And then I revisit that document and I start writing. I, did, I just started um, writing what I would want in a book. Never dreamed of writing a book. Never dreamed of writing a book. And that's when the moment hit me that this has to be my divine purpose. There's a reason why I'm so, I'm so in love with not just being a father, but helping other fathers. I would like give encouragement to other fathers. Uh, I have a sense of pride when I see 
dads um, in grocery stores with their kids. And I'm not even going to front, particular black dads. I love seeing that. And that's when the whole, when I moved to the apartment complex and not seeing so many dads in the household, that's when all that kind of hit me. And it flowed in my book. And my first book is Daddy Every Day Rewriting the Black American Dad Story. And um, it, it, it changed me. And I'm like going through the motion. And every time I get stuck trying to figure something out, I just sit back and just let the spirit hit me and directed me writing that book. Because I had, like I said, I never dreamed of writing a book, didn't know how to write a book. I did my best to research. But whatever you're doing, do your research, but still just do it how you want it to be presented. Don't try to necessarily copy somebody else's uh, method of doing something. You can follow their techniques because there are certain steps you have to take if you're going to do something. But uh, make it your own. So that's how I wound up writing my first book and did some talks at libraries and schools. And next thing I know, people are telling me, uh, you should, you should uh, start an organization for this. And I'm like, well, there were some fatherhood organizations as I was you know, doing research for my book. And I said, OK, maybe I will just start one. So daddy every day. Um, and then I started doing more talks. I've had um, opportunities to speak at uh, Gatorade on six different occasions, uh, more libraries and schools, uh, been a part of um, fatherhood um, events. So it's been an amazing journey leading me up to this point, just growing up in, like all my life experiences are all rolled into the whole daddy every day. But now I'm at a point where I'm gonna have to take it to another level as far as sharing more of me. Because I get to the point where I'm mentoring dads, not on a, uh, I guess you could say official basis, but like dads are coming up to me, moms too, just to advice on things here and there. So I'm getting my organization more organized in the sense of where, yeah, I start doing mentorship and things like that for not just dads, but like fathers to be kind of thing to get them ready. Cause there are a lot of things that go with being a father. There's being a father, and then there's being a black father. And there's so much more layers to being um, fatherhood when you're a black father. So that's why I am now. And I got some exciting projects I'm working on. So I'm, I'm in really in a good place right now. I'm really in a good place right now. That's good. Uh, I guess we'll start the question part of the segment. Bro, I nope. go on and on. That was a lot of uh, information that I didn't know about you. I didn't know that y'all uh, were poor for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now, I when know. I say rewriting the Black American Dad story, I was like, it seems like all dads starts there. But <laughs> my goal, though, is to make sure that's not how my sons start their fatherhood journey, journey and things like that. So that's why I say rewriting. So yeah. two kids and married. Now, now what? Whenever you're telling the story, there's always something you leave out. And then one of the most recent events, and this is when I say I start sharing more of myself because you don't know this. I have recently divorced. Wow. Yeah. Um, I haven't shared that part of me. Like, I share things about me because I know there's people watching me. And, and everyone should know that there's people watching you that are inspired by you. I'm inspired by you, brother. And I hate that I've never, like, said it to you. When I see you on social media and I see you doing your thing, sometimes I'm sitting back, um, Watching Netflix, not even chilling no more because, you know, brother single and stuff. But mm -hmm. watching Netflix, and I see, I said, this man is crying. It. If you don't open your laptop and do something, like, so I just want to salute you for you just standing on your grind, brother. What, like, what, what damn it, man, because uh, you're my, one of my inspirations. I hate, I, I mean, it sounds redundant and it, it sounds like I'm just saying some shit, but you, are, you can ask my wife. Every time I see some daddy every day shit, I get mad and like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta catch up. You know what I mean? You, you, it's probably five or six of y'all out there, five or six people out there that I look at all the time and I see stuff pop up and I go, okay, you, you, you chilling too much. You don't, you don't Xbox too much. You, you know, and you're one of them, honestly. Like, I've been trying, I've been trying and trying to come up with, cause I hate doing stuff without a plan. Mm. And I've been trying to come up with a plan for how me and you can work together for a few years now. 
Because Same here. Once you start, that, that one time you had the Daddy Every Day event, and I came out when I first started combining. Oh, appreciate that. First wow. event I've ever done. I appreciate you for having me. But when after I came out of there, I got a few people that are my confidants that I talked to. And I kept saying, man, I need to do something with this guy. I really need, we really need to do something because what you have going on, I know it probably don't feel like it every day when you wake up and you do it and you feel like doing it. It don't feel like a blessing to other people. But, bro, you actually, I have eight kids. I always say eight. Do I got eight? I got seven or eight kids. <laughs> and I wasn't a good father at all. Mm. Like, you remember my oldest, well, I found out that I had a son older than him. No way. Bro, three, four years ago, his mom, this lady came to me and said, you know you got a son that's um 24. Wow. And this 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 little nigga that looked just like me. I can't not claim mm-hmm. it. And it pissed me off. So for 24 years, you kept my kid from me. But you remember my, I'm going to call my oldest son, um, mm-hmm. Lawrence. You remember? Oh, Ed? yeah. We got the picture in joint. When, uh, yeah, playing yeah. with the ducks and shit. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't a good father when he was born, mm. when he was around. Like, whenever y'all came around, he was with me all the time. Mm-hmm. And they moved to Alabama, and I wasn't present enough. And my excuse was, is he lived in Alabama. That's no excuse. No. And then my other kids came along, and they mom moved to Chicago. And my excuse again was being Chicago. It's no excuse. But my last few kids, Lanaya and Alana, bro, you have reading your books, looking at the stuff you you posted online on Facebook. Like, it made me realize that being a good father isn't always what the media puts out there. Mm Mm-mm. Like, being a good father is when that little girl or little boy needs to crawl up on your chest to go to sleep. You are there for them to mm-hmm. do that. You know what I mean? And I told my wife, my, my wife laughs all the time because my baby's 10 months. And for her to go to sleep, she crawls up on my chest and she plays with my beard or my um, dreads and she just falls asleep. And my wife looked at me and said, you love that, don't you? I absolutely oh, man. Do. I absolutely love it. I mean... The way, like, when I get home today, she's going to be standing at the top of the steps with yep. the gate. And she's going to be, <laughs> love it. And your motivation with the dad every day thing has really made me realize that I was, even though I was paying child support, even though I was talking to him every now and then, I was inadequate. You know what I mean? So my going forward with the two little ones that I live with, I've tried to be, I've tried to go by your example as much as possible you know uh i don't know what goes on in your household but what you put in these books you know what i mean i love the fact that you um you wrote a book with your son you know what i mean yeah like stuff like that has motivated me you saw i did lanaya reads I mean, I you know what lanaya reads came from what's that kendra's book man if you don't get out of here bro i'm not joking with you my daughter likes to do videos she got a phone and i gave her i got oh shit I got these cameras over here. I said, you can have these cameras. She don't like the big cameras. She like to use her cell phone. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I saw Kendrick's book, my, my daughter was like maybe two years old. And I said, she going to do something like this. And one day, when she turned like four or five, I said, what, you want to do some stuff with, with dad? I want to read books. I said, great. Ooh, that's- let's do it. But she got bored. Now she want to do make video games and play Mario Brothers. But it when she said that, I said, Kendrick's book. Thank you. And I said, you don't want to write? No, no, no I don't want to write. I, gosh, I want to be like Delonzo. I want my kids to write a book. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, bro, for you to say I inspire you on no bullshit, everything you've done these past few years with Dad Every Day makes me feel like I'm not doing, I'm not working hard enough. And well, Let me stop you right there because you said a lot, and I want to, first of all, when I say Daddy Every Day, people think it means being in the physical form present with your kid yeah. every day. It means several. That there's layers to it. One is daddy every day is even when my kids aren't, my boys aren't with me because the divorce, this is the first time, so this is breaking news because this is the first time I publicly <laughs> said how I'm uh, divorced and our arrangement is every other week. But the boys ride the bus from my house, which means I get to see them every day because I get to take them home well, take them to their mother's house. And then uh, when it's my week, it's chill at my place. But it's when being a daddy every day is 
when my boys aren't with me, the decisions I make affect my boys. So, like, um, me going to work, you know, being able to provide for them, me not being crazy in these streets kind of thing. It's like all that's going to affect my boy. And my boys are watching me. Everything I do. Like, so when they're not with me, it's, you know, sending a crazy text to my son. Um, we like to roast each other all the time. So I'll text my oldest son and tell him, uh, good night. And make sure you tell my favorite son, good night too. <laughs> like that type stuff. Um, and when they're home with me, you know, they still, my 15 year old and my seven year old, they'll still come to the door when I come in the door. Like I come in the door, both of them come to greet me. And I just tell them, um, I'm home ladies. Like we're always we stay on the clock when it comes to roasting each other. Um, Cause my, my goal with that is one, when, they, when they're out in public or in the streets or whatever, I don't care what people say to them. It's not gonna phase them. Like I, I'm building my kids where they're, they're minimally tough and then they can give it, dish it back. And I want, I want to give them these powers because everything I learned, I pass on to them. Uh, give them these superpowers and then use them for good when they're out here. So, um, but back to the daddy every day, the layers. It's also meaning, let's say if your kids are away from you, um, like miles away, states away, whatever, um, writing letters, especially if you got young kids, they love to get stuff in the mail. You write your kid a letter, send it in the mail. Now when their mom is checking the mail, you got mail. So um, um, give your kids, mail your kids envelopes and stamps so that they can mail their young kids, they can mail their drawings and things like that. Um, that's that how one way to stay connected. Damn then good idea. You can even do that if you live in the same household. And you live in the same household, yes. That's a good idea. Man. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, of course, you got you have phones and video chats. You should do that stuff, too. But I say just take it a step further because letters, your kid drawing a picture of you or drawing a picture of their day is, uh, and then getting your opinion on it, that kind of connection is way more powerful than just Zoom calling. I mean, you know, FaceTime and all that stuff. Um, like, I keep my kid drawings and stuff. Uh, he'll get it, my opinion on things and... You know, I tell him, you know, that's good. You're in, he said, my drawing's improving. Isn't it? I said, yes, it is, that kind of thing. But um, So it's the interactions, too. Like, of course, kids love going on trips and stuff, but you got to start traditions with your kids that they grow to love. Like, like, for the last year and a half, every Friday, I get my son's Taco Bell for my oldest and McDonald's for the youngest, except for when Taco Bell got nacho fries. This is not a plug. Uh, my young one love uh, nacho fries, so then I just have to make one stop. But even when they're with their moms, I still drop off Taco Bell and McDonald's for my boys. And on Friday mornings, my oldest one said, you know what today is? And he'll send me like a little emoji with a taco or something. Like, he loves that. Like, my sons, they don't talk about it. We've been to the beach, we've been to Vegas, and I've been, you know, I travel with my boys, but the things they always go back to is, hey, remember when we sat at Taco Bell and it was nice outside? Like, it's the little things. So don't think you have to um, ball out to get your kids this and that. And if they are really into that, that's kind of your fault. Because I'm not into that kind of stuff, so I never put my kids in a, um, a mindset to have that. So you got to remember now, they're watching us. So if you into that, then they're going to be into that thing. You can't get mad if they into it and you into it, that kind of thing. So... Uh, but yeah, daddy every day is just being intentional on what you're doing for yourself, like your health and things like that. Like I make sure I get my checkups and everything because I know, I don't know my biological dad. So when every time I had that form, I can fill out my mom's stuff, but what was your biological dad's health? I gotta leave it blank because I don't know my biological dad, uh, which is one of the things I want to do this year is to find them. So. Um, is, but is, is that what drove you to the dad every day thing? I so I I wasn't sure. I didn't know. I say no at first. I say no at first, and now I'm gonna even dig deeper. Like recently, I went to therapy because there's some things that's going on in my head, and I think there's a that um, I didn't know how to deal with, so I pushed back. But I don't feel like it was affecting my life but it was in my mind, so to a certain extent, it's still affecting me. Whether it's something I stress about, which I don't, but it still affects me. 
And so, in talking with my therapist, she said what you just said. Like, do you think, and I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I remember the, the, the apartments where kids weren't handed down, I had my dad, but then going through life, how I couldn't always fill that form out. That part about my dad and things like that and how I always say I want to be present for my boys. And that's because maybe that is because I was missing that. Like my boys going to be like, yeah, my dad, well, for a matter of fact, he right here. I can have him fill up. Like, <laughs> that's how I want my boys to be. Uh, but that they're going to know about everything about me, my health and things like that. But yeah, like I have unanswered that. And I don't feel like I missed out on anything, like not having that man in my life. But I wonder now, because my boys are so much like me. People say they look like me. I, I really don't see it. Kendrick does. Yeah, that's the one they say really looks like me. But I saw a, a picture of me yesterday when I was like nine, and Dylan is seven, and he kind of looks like that picture. So he'll probably look the same too. But I have no idea if there's somebody out there that I look just like in some of my my characteristics uh, that's not like my sister and my brothers. Um, could that be possibly where I get it from? Like the way I am, like, like even growing up, my sister and brother, they'll tell you, it's like, no, he wasn't the same as us. Like we grew up together. We grew up the same, exact same way. But I'm not the same as my brothers and sisters. Um, I don't even feel like my relatives at all. It's, you know, kind of like, so there is something like that's just in us. Not just how the environment affects you, but it's already in you. Oh, yeah. Like some of the things, it's already in you, oh, yeah. a lot of the things. I don't think people realize that. But now that I mentioned I've been to therapy, I wanted to say this to all. This is for everybody, but I'm going to focus on black men in particular, whether you're a father or not, is that there's the stigma about us with mental health and not getting help. I don't care if you go to a therapist, a counselor, uh, talk to a friend, and I'm not talking about the friend that you do dirt with. I'm talking about the friend that's going to tell you you need to do such and such, and you don't want to hear that, that's the friend you need to talk to, too. Like, um, like we're dealing with a lot. It's, it is a lot. It is, I love being black. Absolutely love it. At times, it feels like a burden to a certain extent. Because my son is 15, and he kisses me on my forehead every day, and it hurts my heart to a certain extent because he does it because he loves me. He does it uh, also kind of mess with me, but he also does it because he don't know if this is be the last time he see me because of the way society is. And it's not just because the world is a dangerous place, because it is, but it's just another level because I'm black. And um, so we deal with a lot that we don't realize. And when I was going through therapy, I also did like a virtual man's boot camp where we talk, opened up and it's a lot of us out there. I'm gonna let you know, I did a boot camp um, by, uh, I don't know if you guys know, KD Bo, Pastor Derwin Davis. It was this man up certified boot camp and it was like other men were talking about our stuff and there's, there's a lot of us out there and we're like, we're living good lives, but we can take ourselves to another level uh, by if we got if you are aware you have some things going on to uh, get the help or at least acknowledge it and take the steps to help yourself. Um, yeah, so like I'm definitely in a better space right now. And I think this will also allow me to help grow daddy every day because I'm the things that I wasn't even aware that I was dealing with. I'm dealing with. So now I'm ready to go to the next level. And that could be what's holding you back. If there's something that's going on with you and you're not getting the help you need, I suggest you do it. And how, it, how did the, uh, I'm sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Go right ahead, brother. I did not know that your wife's name was Keisha, right? Yes. I did not know y'all y'all split. How did the boys take that? All right, so me and uh, Keisha, we both kind of knew, you know, like, of course, you know, yeah. all right, this is not working out and everything. Now, she's still, like, still my homegirl. That's the mother of my children, so, you know, still always have a special place in my heart. But we knew this wasn't working out. And, and of course, like most people with kids, you kind of stick around for the kids. But the problem is they don't get to see what a healthy marriage looks like. Like, we didn't, like, 
you know, curse each other out. We didn't never did anything like that in front of them. But you kids can pick up on how people are interacting with each other. So we eventually went ahead and did it. And that was a concern, um, was about how the kids are going to take it. Uh, they took it way better than probably how we separately handled it. I'm <laughs> like, they tell you, I think the only thing um, I know right now is that I'm not really dating because my oldest son, I don't think is ready. Um, that that's that's the real reason, cause your son's not ready. I mean, man, come on now, I can do a little something out there if I stepped out there. I mean, you know, I st still like still doing the cash patch, right? Cause yeah, it's yeah. been a minute. Yeah, it's they, been a minute yeah, since yeah, I've been out yeah, there. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Oh, bet. No, okay, them. Don't do that. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> but um, and and plus the real reason why I'm not out there, I have no idea what to do. If things are different. I was married, we were married 17 years, so. Oh my God. So I have no idea what to do out there. I, I wasn't good at dating before I got married, so I was lucky <laughs> to get married, so. I have no idea what to do out there. Um, so, and the game has changed, you know, there's social media and all that other stuff. And, and I'm gonna tell you, it, for the ladies that are watching, and uh, what's the Derek guy or whatever and all that stuff, don't let those memes get you out of a, a promising relationship. Talk about Derrick Jackson? Oh yeah, that cat. That cat and all that other stuff people get that online. Dude, that dude's an idiot, man. Yeah. First of all, I, I mean, I knew of him, but then I saw that, it's like, well, yeah. That dude's it, an idiot. Him, that guy. But all the other stuff that people allow to shape their opinions on data. Like, if, if you're at McDonald's and you'll see the fry guy you find him attractive, he says, how you doing? Like, I'm not talking about coming at you wrong, when he come at you correct, it wouldn't hurt to go out on a date with him. Like, I think, like, we're fooled into thinking everyone, like, has to be there. Like, I still think I'm still trying to get there. I'm 45 now, and I still think I'm trying to get there. And if I wait to mingle with people um, to try to, or try to find the other, the, the right one, I may never get there because I always will feel like I'm not there. And if a woman says, nope, I need to find a man who's already there, y'all going to be up there 60, 70 years old at the club. Oh, well, not, not uh, 112. That's not. Nah, it's oh, been a minute, brother. Oh, when I was, uh, before I got married, 112 was around, so I don't, I don't know where to go. What's the name of that? that um, it's a club on Glenwood all the old people go to. I oh, I know, you talk, I know what you're talking Oh, I know what you're talking about. Start with a B. I'm trying not to be in there. You, you'll be in there. I'll be in. Like, you, you and Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> That's when he'll be ready. He's like, you know what, Dad? I'm ready for you to move <laughs> on. Dylan, you have Dylan, my blessing. Uh, D driving y'all there, driving y'all yeah. off. He going to his own club. He going to his own. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some questions before we get you out of here. How has Daddy Every Day helped you? Man. So, I um, when I started Daddy Every Day. I was doing it to help others, just letting the spirit move through me. And man, it may, I've, I've gotten better as a father. Like I feel like I was doing a good job, but it makes me intentional every day. Like every day I'm trying to be more intentional and in, you know, laying a legacy for my kids. That, I guess that's the word, the word I was looking for is legacy. Like, I want to leave a legacy for my kids. And yes, I would like it to be millions of dollars and things like that, but no, I mean a solid foundation. Like, already the kids will have a home, a house that's theirs when I move on. Um, life insurance, um, love. Like, my kids know their love. Um, I love my kids so much. I want people to say you spoil your kids. Not because I buy them everything, because I don't. Um, but because of how much attention I show them, how much love I give them. Um, and, and just as much love, I give them discipline too. But they know it comes out of love. So it's like, it's all circles back to love. I try to reinforce um, um, how I grew up and the things I learned. And I let them be themselves. Like um, our musical tastes are all over the place. Like Dylan loves pop music. But then he loves heavy rock. Uh, my that's, son. My, that's, that's your son. Yeah. My oldest son listens to a lot of um, influenced by video games, the Japanese culture of uh, music. He listens to that. For me, 
love hip hop. Uh, you know, you're one of my favorite rappers. When we get done with this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna turn my car on. You're gonna hear what's playing in there. Um, and uh, so, like, I listen to hip hop, but I listen to a lot of different things, and they've picked up on some of the stuff. Like some of the stuff I, I listen to now, they, you know, they like, they'll gravitate to. They're not big on hip hop, so that's the part I feel like I failed as a father because uh, they're not big hip hop fans like I am. Um, and it disappoints me because if they'll see a picture, it's up Biggie because I love Biggie so much. They know who that is. Um, they get me a Biggie shirt every Father's Day, so uh, they know who that is. But I'm gonna I'm gonna get them on hip hop. Speaking, I need your help because I want to do a, a video series of um, the education of Kendrick. I want to introduce him to hip hop. I want to introduce him to like the '90s hip hop, the hip hop we grew up on. Like I want to introduce him to like select songs and stuff as the years go on. Not today's music. No offense to the artists of today, but um, I'm still stuck in the 90s when it comes to uh, hip hop and R&B. How you wrote that every day. Yes. You created it. Yes. It, it's your baby. That's me. Have you learned more in your research and your development of this brand that helps you as a better person past the father stuff past the father um being more caring I'm, i was always a caring person yeah but, I, I can attest to that you yeah are. but it's like i want to help more like i i want to help no no not help is not even the word i want to serve like i feel like my mission is to serve like that's one of the things i learned from this it's like oh i'm serving like um just like how people do volunteer work I'm um, like, if an individual need help, I'm not just helping them, I'm serving them. That's like, like one of the things I feel like that's our purpose is to serve. Whatever your talent is, you're using that to help serve somebody, whether it is entertainment, whether it's empowerment, whether it's education, we're here to serve. So I feel like that's opened me up to that, like just being around, like when talking with people that have been inspired by my books, uh, in particular, my fresh start for Dash, reconnecting after prison and absenteeism. Um, I'm, you know, donating books to prisons and things like that. Um, it's my best selling book by far of all the books, and it came later compared to the others. But um, people who have incarcerated dads in prison want to kind of give them encouragement. And that's my next level is to actually start going to prisons. To, to help out so it's like it's giving me courage this whole daddy everyday thing to to uh do more as a person like continue to serve but be um bolder in it um seek out those that need assistance and help um and not just wait for it to come to you um and to do the scary things like a lot of times we want to be comfortable and stuff but I'm learning to try to be uncomfortable, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, putting myself in that kind of um, mindset. And it's like a lot of this stuff is just like, like it's been years in the making, and now things are really starting to turn around for me. So be patient. For, I'm like, patience is another thing I learned with this because you don't write a book and then bam, you're a success. It takes time. Whatever you're doing, it's going to take time. But if you're being consistent with it, you're going to see progress. And when you see progress, that's going to energize you. So that's why I am right now. That's what the whole daddy everyday thing has done for me is got me to learn to be patient, be consistent, um, and continue to be caring, um, and then just push yourself. So that's, that's what I've learned. Uh, and then I try to pass on to others. Let's get to the technical aspect of daddy everyday. How do you promote? All right. So I have been the worst at tooting my own horn. Um, we just talked about it. Yep, yeah, just talked about that. I, I, I oppose things. Um, th some things happen, I won't say by chance, but like because my stuff is out there. So like I think you should have a website, you know, a social media page. I think, you know, do things so people can find you. So like people have found me, like people found – Despite the fact I haven't advertised my books on Amazon, I sell books every week, the Fresh Start for Dads in particular, every week on Amazon. And these are people I don't know. I have sales in 
China, in the UK, people I don't know, never promoted over there, but somehow they found my stuff. So my challenge to everybody is at least have your stuff available. Now, as far as promoting it, that's the part where I've lacked. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't gone to the next level is to, uh, as far as sales and things like that. That'll take me to the next level if I start promoting. But I'll do like so Facebook posts. Every once in a while, I'll do a paid ad. Uh, I'm, I know I'm not doing it properly, so I probably really need to <laughs> research that to properly do that. But, you know, like social media. Um, um, and then the events that I attend, I do. I've traveled to... Um, libraries just out outside of my city to do events and things like that and try to get the word out but I just need to go to another level with that so um, that has been the part where I'm just not I'm not a salesperson in that sense and I keep telling myself and I have to stop telling myself that because the more I tell myself I'm not a salesperson I live up to that so I have to um, change my mindset in that but I'm getting there and this is one of the things I, I, I'm trying to do a better job at because I've let a lot of opportunities slip by but when I was given this opportunity thank you no, I said I will not let this pass me by and I love what you're doing and everything can, and you, can you stop praising me for a minute this is all about you now <laughs> uh, <laughs> we about to get out of here in about three or four minutes uh so I really love that every day I appreciate it I love the fact because I knew you when you were just silly Delonzo at the AMC. You I'm still I mean? silly, just not the AMC. <laughs> <laughs> and I would have never thought this. Me either. Like, and it's great. It it ain't. I knew you were never going to jail. I knew you. I knew, <laughs> I knew I'd never hear about you robbing somebody or because you you and you and Roy came to Kimberly Court that time. Y'all was ready to get the hell out. Man, on. oh, well, <laughs> we need to sit back and shit. That's man. But, oh my god. But one thing I knew from you. I knew you were a leader. I knew you were compassionate. Everybody that was around you, you cared about. You showed it. Like you was a dick sometimes, but you showed that if somebody was under you, because I was, you were my supervisor at AMC, and if somebody was under your charge, under your protection, you did that. So to see you bring daddy to daddy every day to fruition the way you have because when i first saw it i went what the hell is he talking about <laughs> and when i came out to your event for the combined thing and i was you know you reading the book and the people that showed up and the way you interacted with everybody i was like this is classic delonzo this hmm. this is what he do but then when i looked at the book and matter of fact you gave me a copy and i went on amazon and bought a copy because i was like i'm not just gonna take a free copy but when I really read it, I was like, this shit is so deep. Like, it wasn't any superficial nonsense. Right. Like, what you wrote wasn't, wasn't just humbug. Like, what you wrote spoke to me, to my heart. Like I told you, it told me, it didn't just advise me on, oh, you're doing a great job as a dad. Keep doing it. It showed me my shortcomings. And it hurt. And that's how I realized, that's when I realized, this is something that's magnificent. This is something that's needed. And I've been telling people about it for years now. Like, whenever I talk to somebody and they go talking about their father or how they're not a good father or how they want, hey, man, you, you really need to get in this program, Dad, every day. You know, and I've been telling people for, especially my wife, me and Delonzo, we really need to link on some stuff. And we do. Because we really do. what you got going on is way more important than this, than what I got going on. No, I it, beg to differ. No, listen. I beg to differ. I'm going to listen to you, but I beg to differ. I'm going to tell you. It's more important because what I'm doing is what I just said. It's easy and it's superficial. Anybody can go buy a camera and some lights. What you're doing is changing lives. And not just the lives of men who impregnated a woman, but kids. Our future. You see what I'm saying? Like, what I'm doing will be lost to the ravages of time. What you're doing is super generational because anybody can take the map, everybody doing what I'm doing. Anybody can put this mixer and this mic together and do what I'm doing. But it's going to take a special person like yourself to pick up that baton and keep this going. 
You see what I'm saying? And that's why what you're doing is so important because everybody can't sit there and take their life story and share their life story to a point where it makes other people better. You get what I'm saying? No, like I didn't. That, that's that's why I feel like what you're doing is so so. I, first of all, I appreciate that, and that right there is going to be fuel for me to keep going. But I have to point out, there is somebody that's going to watch this, and they're probably going to call their kid, uh, and just tell their kid they love them. Or they're probably going to like hug their kid. And that moment wouldn't have happened without you. Without that every day. Without you. Because you, you, you're you doing a different type of work. You're giving people the vehicle to display their works. You're connecting me with a dad out there right now that I would have never reached. So you are doing important work. Your work is just different. Everybody's work is different, but if you're in your purpose, which I know you're in your purpose, you are a creator. I'm supposed to be a rapper right now, man. I'm supposed to be big time. I'm supposed to be Diddy right now. So what you saying? <laughs> so um, I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be. Uh, 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 like, I'm supposed to be dancing in your videos. Like, like what you said earlier. I'm not a salesperson. That's what stopped me from the rap shit. I, I can't. When I was doing all these shows and stuff, and people. Was, telling me to come out of town and do shows I wasn't good at promoting myself and that's what stopped the rap shit like this this is easy everybody want to be in front of a camera so it's too easy like I get <laughs> emails and inboxes every day hey man I want to interview hey man I want to interview and so this is easy I can okay all right come on do an interview but the people that I reach out to I feel like they have something important to Respect. say I appreciate that but yeah, I'm about to get you out of here. Uh, what's your social media and all that stuff? All right. So I'm going to start posting more. And since you're getting this breaking news as far as you know what's going on with me, if you want to continue the journey, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Daddy Every Day. Uh, you can email, email me at info at daddyeveryday.org. Visit the website, daddyeveryday.org. Um, and I got online bookstores, but everything's at daddyeveryday.org. And you can connect with social media and everything from there. You can see what I'm working on. Um, yeah, so I think that's about it. I got um, Twitter. I don't do Twitter, really, so I don't really do Twitter. I'm LinkedIn, Delonzo Barnes. That's why I got, like, a professional picture up there and everything. I think I even have a tie on. I don't like wearing ties. Same but, uh, shirt. Huh? Same shirt? No, nah, no. Nah, I just I said, bro, I was a kid. I said, oh, man. I'm going to be on a big lack show. Let me try to get fresh. Like this Fuchsia shirt. Yeah, I got this. Yeah, yeah. Get cologne on and stuff. Ain't you had on cologne? Yeah, I got that. That old spice. You know how you, you, know, you, know, how we, you know how we do it out here in these streets. No, I don't so. how we do that. <laughs> I wear <a> coach. <laughs> I wear old spice. Okay, step, <laughs> step my game up. I told you there's a lot of things you got to learn before I get back out there. Hey, man, that street. YSL cologne good, too. Shout out my wife for buying me that. The what is it? it? YSL. Got it right. That's you say, Laurent. Damn. Yeah, man, that shit is delicious smelling. But uh, <laughs> I really appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you, bro. We got we to gotta do something. Um, you know we're going to do something. You know how us, we, us Negroes, we say, hey, man, we got to work together. Yeah, we got to link up. Then yeah. we're going to talk for six months. Right. Uh, but I do have an opportunity for you once the camera stops. And I want to see how you feel about it. Uh, and we'll talk about it. All right. This has been Delonzo Barnes, Daddy Every Day. And this has been the Big Lat Show, man. Let's get out of here. Peace. Extreme.